Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will go through how to put hyperlinks into a view like I'm showing here. As you probably know, you can go into the version history of any file by clicking these little ellipses here or by selecting a file and then finding it up there. And that's very useful, but having a button right there next to the item might be useful also. Also, it might be very useful to have this hyperlink pointing to another system, another web-based system where you have the URL, where you have the ID of the current item. So you want to link directly to the page in the CRM system, something like that. So uh, if you find this useful, this is the end goal. I'm going to show you how to achieve it using a workflow in this demonstration. There are several ways of doing this, but I'm going to be showing you how to do it in a workflow. So first of all, I'm going to reset this to the standard, and then I'm going to start over and build it from scratch. All right, now I've redone the work I already did, but now I'm going to show you how it's done. First of all, you need to open SharePoint Designer. That's where we're going to work with your workflow. I have reset everything from scratch. The only thing that I've kept is inside assets, there is the image that I'm going to be using, the icon for the version history. So I'm going to go into the lists and libraries there and find the procedures document library. In that, I'm going to create a new workflow. And that's going to be a workflow to set version history link. And I'm going to set that in a column on the procedures document library. But I need to create that column first, of course. So let's do that, edit list columns. So multiple lines of text. I'm going to call that history. And I'm going to go into the properties of this one. And I'm going to allow it to contain enhanced rich text. And of course, I want that. I want a multi-line text field capable of handling HTML, because that's what we're going to be doing. And I'll also put in the description, filled in by workflow. So that we have that. And I'm just going to save this now. And that, of course, updates the SharePoint list when I save it in SharePoint Designer. So then we're going to work on the, this workflow. And we're going to start by going into workflow settings and starting this workflow automatically when an item is created, when it's uploaded or created. Then I'm going to go and open the workflow. And of course, we're going to go to the end. We always do that in SharePoint 2013 workflows and the workflow. And then we are going to update the item with that column. So I'm going to find that action. It's in here somewhere, but I'm just going to type it, update, update the list item. And the item I'm going to update is the current item. And I'm going to set the history field to a string. And here, of course, is the part with a bit of work. So let me show you that now. First of all, of course, we're going to have an anchor, so an A-link. And that's going to have an href. So it's going to reference something. And we're going to reference the current site URL. And that's from the workflow context. I get that, current site URL. And then we're going to hard code the layouts link to the versions page. So that's underscore layouts 15 versions.aspx. And then we're going to supply the list. And there we want the list ID. And we get the list ID from this. We go into the library settings. I can open that. No, I couldn't open that in a new tab. There we go. I get the URL encoded list ID there. So let's decode that. I find the URL decoder.org works rather well. So let's just paste it in there and decode that. And there you get the grid of the current list, including the curly brackets, which I don't need to supply. So I can just remove those and copy that whole thing. I'm going to copy that and go back into SharePoint Designer and send that parameter in there. And then I need to send the ID. So I'm going to do an ampersand ID equals, and then we'll, of course, pick up the current ID from the current item. There we go. And that's the end of my href. So that points to the version history page for the current item, which is exactly what I want. And then I'm just going to do a target parameter also 
to my uh, to my anchor, and that's going to be that it's going to open in a new tab. So I'm going to target equals underscore blank. That's the end of my beginning of the my of my anchor, and then of course we're going to close the anchor also. And inside the anchor we're going to show an image, and we want to show the image of that icon that I showed you earlier. Of course that's an image tag, and the source of that is going to be the link, of course. So src equals, and then I'm going to copy and paste the URL in there, and then I'm going to close the tag. So that should conclude that. I'm just going to go and click out of this so I can get the URL for the site asset that I had. I'll right click on that, select properties, find the URL there. Make sure I get all of it. There we go, copy. And then we go back into the builder there and paste that in in exactly the right spot. And that should be it. All right. So now let's test this. All right. I'm going to publish this. And once it's published, I'm going to try it by uploading a document. So let's go back to the procedures. And now I'm going to upload a document, a file, and let's just do any old file here. The um, merger letter sounds good. So that's uploading now. And there we see now in the view, it's created in the history column, of course, in the set version history now. So let's refresh that. And we should see that it's on stage one. And we also see the hyperlink there. Excellent. So that's working as it should. Let's just open that now with the link there. And we'll notice that we get the version saved for merger letter. So that works as it should perfectly. Now we just need to modify the view here. We don't want users to see that set version history link. So just remove that set version history link. OK. And now to get all of the other ones to have the same link, of course, I need to upload them again, or I can just manually run the workflow, which might be the better option. I do that here, more workflow. Could also temporarily set it to run when something is changed. That might be a good idea to get it done. Let me show you how to do that. So now we have that one. There we go. So the remaining three, I'm going to change those. So temporarily, I'm going to go in and set this to start automatically when an item is changed. Of course, I'm going to publish that then. And then to run those three, I'm going to simply create a new column and just do a text column there. Call it test so that I remember to remove it. And then I'm going to go into quick edit, set something in test like just the number one and fill that down for all the items that don't have a link yet. There we go. Now all of these have changed, of course, so when I exit the quick edit, already we see that the workflow has run on all those. So that means that I can go into library settings, remove the test column, which of course is no longer needed, and just mess up the place, delete, and then of course we're gonna set the workflow not to start automatically when an item is changed and publish. All right, so there we have our completed workflow that adds a new column with a button on it that shows version history. Thank you for watching this demonstration.